evening, urban design lovers. Um, one of the things you're learning tonight is there's a lot of white dudes who do urban design, so hello. Um, my name is Damon Rich. Uh, as Beth said, I'm coming to you live from Newark, uh, where in 2008 I became the city's first municipal urban designer. My boss, uh, Mayor Cory Booker, said that he wanted Newark to set a national standard for urban transformation. I said, yes. But then I asked myself, what in the world does that mean? Uh, it made me think a lot about the stories, oftentimes false, that we tell ourselves about American cities from early 20th century Eurocentric immigrant golden ages to middle 20th century black, brown, and poor urban crises to happily late 20th century friends urban renaissances. And it made me think about the, the story of Newark itself and the things that that quick narrative leaves out, like that the city itself was an enormous victim of urban planning, where the city demolished about a third of its territory, and it also was the site of amazing new uh, versions of political power, for example, where the first African-American mayor was elected in 1970. And today, if you come to the city of Newark, have anyone been to Newark? Yeah, awesome. I hope the size of the airport. Um, I'm sorry. You'll see, I feel like this is a I, I, you'll, you'll see all kinds of evidence of that struggle. Uh, down to some of the slogans you'll see where it says Newark is great because it's one stop from New York City, one stop to the airport, you can get out quick. Um, so of, of all the things that that quick narrative that I referred to leaves out, I think is perhaps sort of a grand dream of political self-determination of post-Great Migration American cities. The dream of a proud black city. This was a drawing done by the Architects Renewal Committee of Harlem. And so that's what I've tried to keep in mind as I've tried to figure out what an urban designer should do for the city of Newark. So I'm going to tell you about three roles. First role is neighborhood mechanic. Kind of rolling around, looking for what's busted, trying to figure out what kind of sidewalks hide gum stains the best and trying to reverse engineer that. Tinkering with the zoning codes to try to make the most pleasant interfaces between public and private buildings. Second role is the nudge where I am trying to harass developers and their architects to create any possible public benefit out of the projects, taking them out for breakfast, talking to them about how maybe their building should be on the street instead of in the middle of a sea of parking. A third role is cheerleader of local democracy, um, by which I mean trying to make the city really speak to people. Uh, for example, if you know the Federal Neighborhood Stabilization Program, NSP, uh, this is a program uh, that is explained by these banners that talks about how a house became a victim of subprime financing and how its future might be a de demolition to make way for a park. So the rest of the time I'm going to tell you one particular story of trying to be a cheerleader of local democracy as well as using some of those other uh, elements in the quiver. Um, and this is about Newark's riverfront. Now there's a lot of things you can say about Newark's riverfront that are very true but very generic. Um, the uh, very first one would be that the riverfront is the reason that the city is there. Uh, the second one would be that if you go there today, you'll see a lot of what uh, plannerly types call underutilized property. Um, third, it is the inheritor of an enormously uh, horrible environmental legacy. And fourth, at least for 40 years, it's been seen as the hopeful protagonist of urban redevelopment, uh, especially by developers. Um, so, uh, and, and all those visions, of course, have not come to pass. So, with the riverfront in particular, uh, what we've tried to develop is a much more acupunctural approach, trying to put out a whole series of proposals and seeing what floats down the political current. So, very important for this is actually trying to develop a constituency for the riverfront. And as you saw, our goal is two cents about the reinvention of the riverfront from 2% of New Yorkers. So, how do we do that? Um, I started off not knowing much, so I went to people who knew a lot, like teenagers, and we started hanging around at the riverfront, just kind of looking around, mapping what we found, things like dead birds or leftover boxer shorts. Um, <laughs> then we began kind of imagining our own visions for the riverfront, whether it was kind of a giant factory that made the aroma of chocolate, or a, a boardwalk in the form of a roller coaster. Um, and then we tried to make these visions somehow more material, uh, more public, to spread them around. Uh, so, for example, we built an enormous model of the way that we thought that the riverfront should look in the year 3000. And uh, we had a press conference, which was the first slide, where the mayor came and cut a little ribbon on the little model. Afterwards, we had a press conference, the local news came, um, and then we installed it, and uh, the four or 500 people who come out of City Hall saw it for at least a second a day to say, what in the world is that? And we thought, that's great, people are thinking about the riverfront. Um, then we got a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts to do some public programming to take people to places to see it with their own eyes. 
Uh, we worked with a local designer who usually does kind of dance all club flyers to make this uh, hopefully very appetizing flyer, and we spread it all throughout the bloodstream of the city to try to get the word out. Um, to date, we've taken about 1,500 people uh, from Newark out on to our boat rides. We've also done some walking tours where we do everything from sea sewage uh, treatment plants to uh, sea places where they take French fryer grease and make it into biodiesels. And then that really fuels other more, I'd say, significant public processes, like the design of the city's first park, uh, which is this right here, uh, which is currently in construction after about two years of design. Uh, I've been working, uh, it's been really great, with landscape architect Dean Weintraub, and also collaborating with graphic designer Glenn Cummings. You'll see some of our very funky signage down there at the bottom. That'll be open next summer if everyone comes to visit. Less sexy than that, I'm glad you think that's sexy. Uh, we've been working on the regulatory code, the, the rules by which you build the city, reforming the zoning for about 250 acres, uh, to try to have a real public conversation about that, and this is all at meetings that say have six, seven people who come to their block association meeting. We broke down all of the variables the city faces into 24 questions, um, and we start to describe the pros and cons of those. So in terms of two cents from 2%, here's how we're doing. We're about 70% there. We've got a year left in our time period. And most excitingly to me is the real evidence of the development of a constituency. In the upper right hand corner there is an actual petition that was signed by about 1,300 residents saying the way that they would like the principles for the development of the city to go. And in the end, we're gonna have some nice uh, things that urban designers like, like public access waterfront plans on the left. But hopefully we're also gonna have a lot of things like you see on the right, which is everyday people's visions of the way a place might be better uh, in their everyday life. Thank you very much.